for our nutrient stewardship and best agronomic practices for increasing and sustaining high soybean yields. For our nutrient stewardship is a framework developed to communicate the right way to ensure sustainable and efficient use of fertilizer based on four principles, namely applying the right source of fertilizers at the right rate, at the right time, and in the right place. Effective fertilizer use, as guided by 4R Nutrient Stewardship, is important for developing sustainable cropping systems that support improved food production, increased income for farmers, and enhancement and maintenance of soil fertility. More and better quality soybean can be produced with fertilizers. The fertility of soils, which has been largely overexploited, can also be restored with fertilizers. Correct management of fertilizers based on the four R's can therefore result in better social, economic and environmental outcomes for farms, villages, communities and entire countries in Africa. Right Source refers to applying the correct fertilizer that provides crops with the nutrients required for good growth and high yields. Different crops have different nutrient requirements. Different fertilizers also provide nutrients in different proportions. Matching the crop's nutrient uptake requirements with the fertilizer that supplies the right mix and proportions of required nutrients ensures that the right source is achieved. Right rate refers to supplying growing plants with the right amount of nutrients for healthy growth and development. Different crops require different quantities of nutrients for healthy growth and development. The quantity of nutrients required by a particular crop also depends on current soil fertility and the crop yield target. Nutrient requirements will increase as soil fertility decreases. Similarly, as crop yields targets increase, the quantity of nutrients required to support those targets also increases. Right time refers to matching nutrients application with the timing of plant nutrient uptake. Most crops take up nutrients slowly during the early stages of growth, but the rate of nutrient uptake increases as crop develop. Fertilizer applications time to match periods of high plant nutrient uptake ensure efficient uptake of applied nutrients. Right place refers to adding nutrients to the soil at a place where the crops can easily access them. Different crops have different rooting characteristics and this has an influence on their ability to efficiently access and take up applied nutrients. The right placement of fertilizer for a particular crop should be selected to match a crop's rooting characteristics and other aspects such as planting density and tillage system. The right placement method will ensure reduced nutrient losses. Best crop management practices, coupled with the four R's, will boost crop productivity amongst farmers. We are at Killing Killing Community, where we have established four R learning for the farmers to take up the best practices being promoted by the four R project. The essence of this demonstration is to show farmers the benefits of applying fertilizer and inoculating soybean. As you can see, we have invited the farmers in the community to participate because adult learning is best taken when you participate in whatever activity that is going on. Our purpose is to demonstrate, to let farmers know the good soya bean variety available for them and how to cultivate the soya bean successfully. We are demonstrating their practice where they do not apply fertilizer at all and the recommended practice where we apply fertilizer as well as inoculant. Field management and land preparation practices for best soybean yields. To ensure good soybean yields each season, avoid growing soybean on the same field continuously and rotate soybean with cereal crops such as maize. 
Planting soybean in the same field continuously increases the chance of pest and disease infestations. Start field preparation two to three weeks before the start of the rainy season, from mid-May to early June. Before plowing and harrowing, first clear any overgrown weeds, shrubs and stumps. After the field is cleared of shrubs and stumps, plow the field uniformly to a depth of 20 to 30 centimeters. Plowing should be done when the soil moisture level is low to minimize soil compaction. After plowing, harrow the field uniformly by breaking up large soil clots that may be present, then make ridges 50 to 60 centimeters apart. Good plowing and harrowing practices will help to control weeds, kill some insect pests, and also make it easier to incorporate manure, apply fertilizer, and plant seeds. Today is a planting for soya bean. Before we did the planting, we plowed the felt, harrowed it so that we could get a leveled felt and they are very appreciative of what so far we have done today. It's very important to harrow your felt or manually level the land after plowing. Yulam boy na para adamo. Ka agre kana boil tanda te kana te de bansam koto ya. Ka te kana te mena kana ma soya beans bansam mani ka wana bansam ka zan lete. Te mena kana ma te kana mar nong te nya asam pam te ru mina la la bansam ka te yang kana kwe te zigi. Seed selection and seed rate for best soy bean yields. Plant improved soil bean varieties recommended for your area. To ensure good germination and high yields, plant newly purchased certified seeds of the recommended varieties. If newly purchased certified seeds are not available, you should use seeds from the first crop of the certified seed as seed for the second crop and second crop seeds for the third crop. Do not plant seed from the third crop. We brought a good variety released by Sari in the year 2019 because that is all part of the packages of 4R. 4R focuses on exposing to farmers best crop varieties and best agronomic practices particularly on the use of fertilizers. We came here to plant soya beans with the maize. The soya bean variety is Zianguma and the maize is Sanzalsima. These are the improved varieties that we have come to introduce to farmers here. Before planting, make sure the seed selected for planting is not more than 12 months old to ensure good germination. If using seed from the previous season, sort out the good seeds for planting to ensure that they are free from insects, disease infestation and weed seeds. The recommended seed rate for good soybean yields is about 50 to 60 kilograms per hectare. Based on the size of your farm, and the recommended seed rate, acquire enough quantities of seeds in consultation with your agro dealer or your AEA. Before planting, conduct a germination test at least 10 days before planting by planting 50 seeds. If at least 40 germinate, the seed is good for planting. If 30 to 40 emerge, plant more seeds than recommended. If less than 30 seeds emerge, get new seeds. Table 1 Soybean varieties recommended for Northern Ghana
Four are tips for soybean seed selection. One, ensure to buy your seed from trusted dealers only. Two, the seed pack should contain the following information. Soybean variety, packing date, expiry date, germination rate. Three, check the seeds to ensure they are of good quality and uniform in appearance with no deformed or discolored seeds. Biological nitrogen fixation. Soybean forms root nodules, which contain bacteria called rhizobia. The rhizobia bacteria can fix nitrogen from the air into a form that soybean can use for growth. This is called biological nitrogen fixation. Some of the nitrogen is also left in the soil through fallen leaves and roots, helping to improve soil fertility. This makes soybean a good crop to grow as an intercrop or in rotation with cereal crops, such as maize, as they can benefit from the nitrogen provided by the soybean crop. As a result of this biological nitrogen, soybean does not require application of nitrogen fertilizers. Inoculation. To form nodules and fix nitrogen, soybean needs specific rhizobia. In most soils, these rhizobia are not present in high quantities. In such cases, inoculation of soybean seeds with inoculants which supply the required rhizobia bacteria is required. Examples of inoculants available for northern Ghana include Legume Fix, Sarifix, and Nodumax. The right method for inoculating soybean seeds with inoculants depends on the type of inoculant used. Therefore, always check the inoculant package for instructions on inoculation or inquire from an agro-dealer or extension officer. This inoculation is usually done at planting. We inoculate the plant by adding an inoculant produced by Sari called Sarifix. Sarifix is an inoculant that is packaged in such as weighing 100 grams. And this 100 grams such as can inoculate a seed quantity of 16 kilograms. So approximately, you can always use five grams to inoculate one kilogram seeds. So we have demonstrated to farmers how to go about the inoculation. We brought the farmers together, fetched the quantity of seed we needed to inoculate, added sugar into water just to give us a sticky substance so that if you add the inoculant, it is able to stick to the seeds. So this was demonstrated to all the farmers. After that, we let them to do the planting together. We want them to know that soya beans, you can use something that we call inoculant to help it to yield very well. With these inoculants, they have also learned how to apply the inoculant. What we did with them, we showed them the inoculant, brought the soya beans, fetched small quantity, mix it with sugar, that is something that will let it adhere to the seed, so that when they are planting, it will not be rubbed off. After that, we dry the soya beans mixed with the inoculant under the shade of a tree for about 15 minutes. We then started using it to plant. Soya beans ma, but it's a little seven le shelly, but it's a mix sort of puny, zambarle. Bansom tonight, it's a little zampul coraj, and it's a little taba, caranota and fanny, canonta barca. Examples for inoculation using commonly available inoculants are provided below. Inoculation with solid dry inoculants, example Sarifix and Legume Fix. 1. Measure 15 kg of soybean and place in a clean plastic container, preferably with a lid. 
2. Moisten the seed by adding a small amount of clean water into brackets 30 milligrams, 3 table teaspoons or 6 teaspoons or soda bottle tops and mixing well with the seeds. 3. Add 75 gram into bracket 7 tablespoons or 15 teaspoons of inoculant to the seeds. 4. Mix the seeds and inoculant thoroughly until all the seeds are uniformly covered. 5. Cover the container containing the inoculated seeds with a lid, cloth, gunny bag, and place it in the shaded area until planted. 6. Plant the inoculated seeds within 1-2 to two hours of inoculating them. Note, you can adjust the volumes above to any quantity of soybean seed. For each kilogram of seed, use 5 grams into bracket 1 heap teaspoon or soda bottle tops of inoculant. All inoculated seeds should be planted on the same day. Inoculation with solid wet inoculants, example Nodimax. 1. Dissolve the contents of the gum arabic packet into bracket included with the inoculant into 300 mg of water into bracket 6 teaspoons or soda bottle tops. This is the sticker solution. 2. Measure 15 to 20 kilograms of soybean seed and place in a clean plastic container, preferably with a lid. 3. Moisten the soybean seed by applying the gum arabic sticker solution to the seeds and mixing well. 4. Add 150 gram into bracket 15 tablespoons or 30 teaspoons of inoculant to the seeds. 5. Mix the seeds and the inoculant thoroughly until all seeds are uniformly covered. 6. Cover the container containing the inoculant seed with a lid, cloth or gunny bag and place it in the shaded area until planted. 7. Plant the inoculated seeds within 1 to 2 hours of inoculating them. Note, you can adjust the volumes above to any quantity of soybean seed. For each kilogram of seed, use 10 gram into bracket 1 tablespoon or 2 teaspoons of inoculant. All inoculated seeds should be planted on the same day. 4 R tips on inoculants Once the inoculant package is opened, all contents must be used and not kept for reuse. Maximum storage period under farmer's conditions is between 6 to 8 months or check the expiry dates at the back of the package. Inoculants lose their effectiveness when exposed to heat or direct sunlight. Therefore, always store the package in a cool place in the house and only purchase close to planting time. Inoculants also lose their effectiveness when stored in an open package. Therefore, do not open the package until you are ready to use it. Each legume crop needs a different type of rhizobium bacteria, so always check you have the right inoculant for the crop you want to sow. Directions for using inoculants can be found on the package. Planting Soybean planting in the northern region should be done between mid-June and late July, based on the onset of the rains and the variety. Planting should be done in the morning or evening to avoid direct sunlight on the inoculated seeds as direct sunlight can make the inoculant ineffective. For good growth and yields, plant soybean in rows using planting lines. Planting in rows ensures that the right planting density is achieved and also makes weeding and harvesting easier. The recommended planting spacing for northern Ghana in a row-to-row -row spacing of 50 cm and 15 cm spacing between plants in a row. To achieve the desired spacing, make planting holes that are about 5 cm deep at the spacing of 15 cm between holes. Plant two soybean seeds at a spacing of 15 cm between seeds. To ensure the right spacing between rows, Use wooden pegs and planting lines to demarcate row positions and ensure consistent between row spacing of 50 cm. If soybean is grown as an intercrop with a cereal crop, it should be grown in strip intercrops to avoid shading as soybean does not grow well when shaded. 
When planting soybean as an intercrop with a cereal such as maize, plant in strip intercrops with two to four rows of soybean followed by two rows of maize. Fill gaps one or two weeks after sowing where no plants have emerged. Fertilizer application. Fertilizer application in soybean should be conducted at 14 days after planting. For good soybean yields, fertilizer application should be based on the four hours of fertilizer management so as to ensure that the soybean crop is supplied with the right source of fertilizer. Apply at the right rate at the right time in the growing season and at the right place where growing plants can easily assess nutrients supplied. To understand the best 4-hour practices for good soybean yields, it is important to understand the key nutrients required by the soybean crop for good growth and how they should be supplied. For good growth and yields, soybean requires to take up large quantities of nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium. Since soybean can biologically fix into bracket manufacture its own nitrogen, it does not require fertilization with nitrogen-rich fertilizers such as ammonium, nitrate or urea. Soybean can however not fix other nutrients it requires in large quantities such as phosphorus and potassium and these need to be supplied through fertilizers. What is important here is how do we improve the soil nutrients that soya beans will use to give us good yield. Uh, fertilizer application is recommended also in soya bean. Usually we apply it uh, two weeks after planting. Two weeks after planting is the recommended time for applying fertilizer and you must make sure that your field is weed free and there is some appreciable moisture in the field. In my village, we don't know how to apply fertilizer. We apply fertilizer when we get it. Four our project come to teach us how to apply fertilizer. Immediately you plant your crop. 14 days, you have to apply fertilizer. When there is moisture in the soil, we learn how to dibble closer to the crop and then how to apply the fertilizer. You will fetch a fertilizer a spoonful and then you will pour it into four or five holes and then after that you close it. Right source of fertilizer application for soybean. The right source of fertilizer for soybean are compound fertilizers or fertilizer blends that supply large quantities of phosphorus and potassium. Since most compound or blended fertilizers that supply phosphorus and potassium often contain some nitrogen, farmers should select fertilizers that contain high proportions of phosphorus and potassium and small contents of nitrogen such as NPK 11 21 plus 5 sulfur plus 0.72 zinc plus 0.5 boron. Farmers can also get recommendations from their agro-dealers or AEAs on the locally available fertilizer that is best suited for soybean. Right rate of fertilizer application for soybean. Soybean needs to be supplied with about 15 kilograms of phosphorus per hectare, which is equivalent to 35 kilograms of P2O5, and about 25 kilograms of potassium per hectare, which is equivalent to 30 kilograms of K2O. To achieve the right rate using NPK 11, 22, 21, plus 5 sulfur, plus 0.72 zinc, plus 0.5 boron, three bags of fertilizer will be required per hectare. To achieve the right rates for different field sizes, follow the guidelines presented in the following table. Field size, half acre. For half an acre, Apply half a bag of NPK 11 21. For one acre, apply one bag, two acres, two bags, five acres, five bags. The rates above can be adjusted for any size of field by multiplying the size of the field in acres by one bag. For our tip, if you do not have any fertilizer, 
you can grow soybean in a field where maize had previously been grown and applied with fertilizer containing phosphorus. Right time of fertilizer application in soybean. Soybeans should be fertilized at 14 days after planting when there is adequate moisture in the soil. Right placement of fertilizer for soybean. To ensure right placement of fertilizer, use a stick to make small holes about 5 cm from each soybean plant stand. Use a bottle top or tablespoon to apply equal amounts of the selected fertilizer by applying one full bottle top or tablespoon in every 4-5 to five holes. Cover the applied fertilizer with soil to avoid nutrient losses. Applying fertilizer 5 cm away from the plant prevents the fertilizer from contacting and damaging the plant as the fertilizer dissolves. The recommended fertilizer is also just like that of the, the granules, 11, 22, 21. In other words, we need a fertilizer grade with uh, half the phosphorus content in nitrogen. Lower nitrogen fertilizer contain is what is recommended fertilizer. So if you take one bag, you should be able to fertilize an acre. Soybean crop management. Management of weeds. Weeds reduce the growth and yield of soybean by competing for nutrients, water and light. For best yields, soybean fields should be kept weed-free by conducting timely weeding at regular intervals. Weed control can be manual, chemical or both. Manual weed control. Weed about three to four weeks after planting and again around six weeks after planting. If the crops grow very well and the canopy closes early, the second weeding is not required. Chemical weed control. Herbicides can be used for both pre-emergence and post-emergence weed control. To control early and post-emergence of weeds, apply weed control herbicides, recommended for soybean. Avoid using herbicides that are in atrazine family for soybean. If there are actively growing weeds in the field at planting, spray non-selective herbicides such as glyphosate or paraquat after applying the pre-emergence herbicide. If only pre-emergence herbicide is applied at planting, one weeding may be required at five to six weeks after planting. Before applying any herbicide, carefully read and follow instructions provided by the manufacturer or consult your local AEA. Management of pests. Common soybean pests affecting soybean are caterpillars and white fly. If pests are only damaging leaves, spraying may not be required as leaf damage is unlikely to reduce yield. From flowering onwards, soybean becomes attractive to pod sucking bugs that can seriously reduce seed quality. If pests are damaging pods, control the pest with recommended insecticides taking care to follow instructions provided by the manufacturer or consult your local agricultural extension agent. The following pesticides can be used to control pest damaging pots. Management of diseases. Major soybean diseases include those caused by fungal, bacteria, and viral infections. To control fungal and bacterial diseases, plant resistant varieties. Plant in a good seed bed and avoid poorly drained or compacted soils. Rotate soybean with non legumes to prevent buildup of diseases. Treat seeds with fungicides for protection against soil-borne fungal diseases. To control viral diseases, plant resistant varieties. 
do not plant seeds from mosaic affected plants. Instead, use certified seed or use seed from non-infected plants. Uproot and destroy affected plants. This can reduce the incidence of insect transmitted viruses. Control weeds in and around the soybean farms. Soybean is most vulnerable to virus infections in the pre-flowering stage. During this period, you can spray one or two times with insecticides to reduce the number of insects that can transmit viruses. Our monitoring visit today is to assess the hygiene unique nature of the fault. And we are here, we are happy with the fault, and this is what we want farmers to emulate. If farmers are able to maintain their fault in this condition and they apply the fertilizer, they would have the benefits of any nutrient that is put on the soil. So this is the stage we want farmers to observe and take into practice. Four are tips for safe use of chemicals for pest and disease control. Use only herbicides, pesticides and fungicides that are recommended for soybean to avoid damage to plants. Chemicals can be toxic to humans, so always follow instructions on the product package or from the agro dealer for safe use. Also follow instructions about the time needed between spraying and safe consumption of fresh pots. Do not store chemicals in the same place as food. Do not eat from the same spoon used to measure chemicals. Soybeans should be harvested when 9 out of 10 pods are mature. That means when they are brown in color and dry. Leaving the crop in the field too long makes the pods very dry, so they might shatter during harvesting. To avoid shattering, it is best to harvest early in the morning. Do not harvest soybean by hand pulling, as this may remove the roots which contain nitrogen and contribute to soil fertility. Instead, cut the mature plants at ground level using a cutlass, hoe or sickle. Make sure grain of different varieties are not mixed. Mixed grains lower the market value. After harvesting, dry the soybean plants in the sun and protect from rains and animals. Preferably, dry on a mat, plastic sheet or tarpaulin, or on a raised platform. When the plants are fully dry, thresh the plants to remove grains from the pots. Dry the threshed grains on mats, plastic sheets or other clean surface for two sunny days while protecting from rains and animals. Test the grains to see if it is dry enough by biting or pinching grain with your fingernails. Dry grains should break or crack, not bend or stick between your teeth or fingernails. Clean the grains, winnow to remove chaff, dust and other rubbish. Also remove shriveled, diseased, broken grains and grains of other varieties. Place grain in clean bags or other containers. If reusing bags in which grain was previously stored, the bags must first be washed and then disinfected by boiling them in water for 5 minutes. If the bag is polythene, make sure it does not touch the outside of the pot or it will melt. Completely dry the container or bag. Grain can be treated before storage to control storage pests. Coating grain with ash or edible oil reduces storage pests. You can also use chemicals. Consult your agro dealer or extension officer for advice. After treating grains and placing in storage bags, clean the storage room where the grain will be stored by removing all old grains and insects. Stack the grain bags on a raised platform or wooden pallet away from the wall. Avoid direct contact of storage bags with the ground. Inspect and remove rotten grains on a regular basis. Do not store grain which is to be eaten in the same place as pesticides or other dangerous chemicals. Bagged soybeans should be transported to a warehouse for safe storage 
Soybean can be sold through farmer cooperatives for competitive prices. Consult your zonal co-op managers for more information. Monies can be sent to the credit union for safekeeping. As a project to reduce post-harvest losses on our brown field is we included post harvest management in the trainings where we trained all the farmers who participated on the field days to properly dry their produce according to standard moisture required for each of the crops. After they have dried it and then they thresh it on a very clean ground, either on a patio or on a tapoli, they are required to mobilize the produce to the warehouse. For our project, in facilitator. Facilitator uh, for our project, I done now. In fact, but third part, we have a tempo. We don't need to go Ghana. But third, we have one bed. But more to one. So we have been sabum. But more to two and be break. But more to three fertilizer. For now, three fertilizer. Now, can we three bones? So we have been snack three fertilizer. Obang. We have three fertilizer. Now, we have three onkangan. So we can we have done now. But more than that, we need. Kerja dekat kita tu nanti terpakai tetapi kau nampu nanti terpakai kita dalam for a project ni nanti tu kau terpakai na nanti terpakai terkain terjaga kekan difference mana yang nama so nengko umpan beam Canadian ya apa kau bawa dalam perabang kerja dekat kena terpakai because terjaga tetapi kau nampu so ya bincang nengak keluar kengan terjepa nengko umpan beam kerja dekat kena terpakai